Uh, anything we go over on this, you'll find a ton of videos on YouTube. There's huge user groups around what you guys are looking to do. Okay. So my goal today is to give you some basic kind of tips. Uh, if anybody has a, a roll of scotch tape, I'll show you something really cool that we can do uh, with the machines and just a paper towel. Uh, that'll, that'll be helpful. So it is a digital duplicator. Uh, it's very much like a screen printer, like you see t-shirt prints or anything like that. It's basically the same technology going on inside this. Uh, it is a very analog device. And what I mean by that, it's not real high tech where you can print and do all these other crazy things with it. We can connect it, but it's something that we decided it's probably going to be best for you to run your master off of, I'm assuming that's what the brother printer's yes. for, right? Yes. Okay. It goes up to 8.5 by 11. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, and this machine likes to do up to 8.5 by 14 yes. if you want to go that way. And I'll show you the paper path and everything. But um, do we have a couple of things? I'll just use this. Yeah, this will work. Follow your dreams. This is nobody's <laughs> in here, is it? I'm not going to embarrass you. Okay. I've learned with my daughter. Being We've crushed their dreams. They have no yeah. dreams. <laughs> you crushed their dreams. <laughs> we do the, you know, it's the same with this dance, really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then we, build, then we build new dreams. Well, with me not being an artist, I've learned you have to be aware of that and ask and all that stuff. So it's, you know. Uh, so when you come up to a RISO, you should have a hard copy in hand. Now, I'm going to talk about this original. Ideally, you can do one, you only do one color at a time, right? As the paper passes through, it does one color at a time. So if I was doing this in two colors, I would have two originals, right? One would be one color. The second one would be the second color. What I'm going to do for this purpose is I'm just going to fold it. So again, with it being a very analog device, it doesn't care, right? It's not going to care what I'm dealing with here. And what I'll do is just put a white piece of paper behind it. So I'm kind of cheating the system a little bit. Mm -hmm. Right? Everybody see what I did there? Mm -hmm. yeah. So essentially that'd be one original and then that would be the second original. Okay. So when I have a, a copy that I'm going to do, very simple process. This does not operate where you put it up in the top corner like a, a copier or anything. It has a center point. And the reason for that is because you can run all kinds of crazy papers through it. You can run different shapes, sizes, all kinds of stuff through there. But it does have marks to mark the eight and a half but the center point is the key thing there. Once I put my original down, I close the lid. The machine automatically switches over to what's called master making. Okay? If it does not automatically switch and you don't hear that going on, there's a little button up here that says master making that you just simply touch. So once, once we got it on, then we just press our start button. Most start buttons I know are green. For whatever reason, Riso made it blue. And when it's lit up in blue, that means it's good to go. No idea what that means. Chris means something to somebody in there, but the blue is not good. What you're hearing in there is if the machine's been sitting for a while, I want you to think about it like an ink pen that got left open. So you've got to scribble to get it to go. That's essentially what it's doing. It's taking these drums, and I think I heard you guys had tried different colors and everything. So it's essentially taking these drums and rotating them. And by rotating it, what it's doing is dispersing the ink. So it's essentially this metal piece right here where my finger is just rotating around inside the machine. And it's got a little ink roller inside of there to spread that ink out to try to get it as even as possible. It may take three, four minutes. If you're running stuff, it's me. It doesn't have to do that every time. It's just if it's been sitting for a while, that's what it has to do. You'll hear it once it's got it all good, it stops. Now it's making the master is what that's called. That's your screen. It does all that automatically. It's basically digitizing the image, wrapping it around the cylinder, and then once it gets it all set, it'll spit out what's just the test copy. That's just the proof. That's all it is. Just saying, hey, this is what I'm going to print. So, just to recap what you just said, sure. Kevin, thank you for, and you're good at this. Um, <clears throat> so, what the what the cylinder is doing is getting this impression of that image, and mm -hmm. it's going to it's going to uh, addition as many of those yeah. as you want. And it will just keep going until you're yep. happy. So it spits out one. From there, if I needed 20, we'll just say 20. I don't even know how much paper is in. Well, once I've got my original, now I can mass produce. This is printing not even at the fastest speed. That's at about 90. That's at 100. Wow. Um, so the one thing I'll tell you, tell you be careful of, 
These things are really popular for flyers for parties. Yeah, mm -hmm. they are. Uh, even back when I was in college, in our fraternity house, we had a little <laughs> mimeograph machine that we ran the fool out of. Just be aware of it. I know this room stays locked and all that stuff, but just be aware of it. Yeah. Um, you know, because somebody can run a thousand prints in ten minutes. Right. I mean, wow. it's very, very fast. So. How long does it take for for something for a, a drum to run out of ink? I mean, it depends on how much coverage you've got on it, really. Okay. Mm -hmm. So something like this, honestly, I could probably get forty thousand of these before I would run out of ink. Okay. <laughs> now, if I've got something, let's say. Um, like okay. this, right. probably more around 10,000. 10,000, okay. Just because it's based on the amount of ink that you're doing there, right? Yeah. <laughs> so once the ink started to kind of like flow, they were really, it was really a, yeah, it's it's a better up. impression. Yep. yep. Okay. <laughs> it's really the best analogy I've ever used is that open ink pen. Yeah. You know, as you, really. as you scribble, it gets darker. Um, what's the good gold spot for like once it's like ready to like like how many sheets should I print in order to like get the ink to like where it really needs to be? Sure. If it's been sitting for yeah. let's say a couple days, mm -hmm. uh, I'd probably say five. Okay. You're not you're not gonna have it. And if you want to cheat the system, what you can do is once it makes the master, the slower I run the machine, the more ink it puts down. Right. Mm -hmm. So if I want something to really look good quick, I just simply back the speed down to one. Now one, I'll tell you, it is there any more paper in there? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let me just run, I'll just run five of them just so you can hear the difference. So you saw how fast it was going at 130. I'm still running about 70 pages a minute, so it's not it's not like it's gonna go backwards or anything. But you can you can start seeing minor differences where it'll darken up a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just the slower you go, the more ink you put down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So with what you guys are doing, you can kind of play around with speed and you can actually get more colors. So you can turn that blue a little lighter, a little darker. Mm -hmm. The other cool thing when you're using a printer and bringing things over, you can do uh, like uh, patterns on it. You can do different uh, screens on it. And you will actually change the colors that you'll be able to get. Because you can take that blue and then you can start stretching that gamut out a little bit more, mm -hmm. you know, just by playing around with the screens. Yeah. There is no rule I can tell you do this and it turns into this. Because I have learned through my 30 years of doing this, color is in the eye of the beholder, so is quality. Yeah. So what looks good to me may not look good to you. What looks good to you, I may not even notice. And and y'all know that. I mean, y'all are in that world. On, okay. Right here where you change the speed. <clears throat> yes, sir. What is what is the density and what is the sure. position? Sure. So density is prior to making that master. So you heard it go through and make the screen and all that stuff. Density is a way to basically burn deeper holes in that master. So it'll take something maybe that's light. So let's say maybe you've got a, a, a gradation of gray that you've printed off and you want to make sure that it gets that. You can play around with that density. It does it before the print. So density is before the print. Print speed is after the print. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Density is a broader scale that you can affect the quality of it. When I say quality, it's more the, the depth of the color. It's how much ink is being put on the paper. The print, the print speed is going to have a little bit narrower band that it can control, <laughs> but it does the exact same thing. Okay? You, yes. may, you may be covering this later, sure. so I don't want to get you lost in the yep. weeds, but what is the uh, mechanism for which it is making the screen because how does it get rid of that screen sure. to make the next screen and, and we've got you've actually got an internal trash can that it uses here it's a master disposal box so the old ones come off and go in here okay so it is an actual thing mm -hmm. that does get yep. just you have a trash can with it i will encourage you to use a trash can with a trash bag yes yeah. mm. yeah. Because if it doesn't have one, then it'll make a mess. But here, I'll dump them out and show you kind of what to do. I'm just going to grab one just so you can see. You typically don't want to grab them, but I won't, I'm going to hold one. And then this just goes right back in the shoe. So you can see kind of, and I'm going to do this without getting ink on me. So one side of it has a slick, Shiny edge. That's the that's the part that's actually getting burned. The holes are going in it. That's where the digitized image is going. But see, that ink will get on your nose, get on your ear. <laughs> Nobody will tell you either. So be careful. 
we have a joke in our office where the new technician joins us. We make them clean the drones to learn it because it's a great way to learn, take it apart. And they <laughs> always end up with ink here, here. Sometimes you get it on their pants and some places and nobody says anything. And then the next <laughs> day they come in, man, why are you saying Right of passage, brother, right of passage. So one side is where the image is. And then the back side, you can start seeing a little bit of it. I don't know what was on there, but that's where the ink actually flows through. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's crazy. You really got to be careful with it because it will get all over you. Now, the cool thing is it is a, a soy-based ink, so just yeah. soaking water. Uh, the only thing I'll tell you is if it gets like in your fingernails or something, just think of it as like paint. It may be with you for a couple days. Uh, I use rubbing alcohol and it comes right off. Uh, but if you have any cuts, you know, obviously watch yourself on that. And that paper that was just like kind of like the template, yeah. um, do you have to stock those up as well? We do. That's where I was going to show you next. So when you open the front door, you got two buttons. And I'll talk about the drum in just a minute. This is a release button that actually comes in and tells it to release the master making unit. So this whole unit right here is where it actually is digitizing the image and putting it on the master material, which is right here. Everything blue, you can touch, it comes off, but it'll come in a roll like this. I believe there was some in here. So it's in this box over here. So it'll come to you. You've got two ends. It'll only go in one way. It says colored flange. This is your colored flange, okay? And it just sits right in, closes right up. And it's kind of like loading paper towels or toilet paper for those of us that do that. Typewriter ribbon. Yeah. Not many people know what that is anymore. Oh, so. I'm old. Time. <laughs> yeah, I am. With you. But once you you just push it in until it'll stop. It's got a stop cap on it. You just close it up and it'll tighten everything up for you. So you don't have to do anything there. There's 265 of those on a roll, so you get quite a few. Um, each one of those masters that are made, you can run 5,000 pages on that one master. Jeez. So. I don't know that I don't know in y'all's world that that would ever happen, but if you did ever need to run something, because uh, something we talked about was like t-shirt transfers, you know, anything that can handle ink, you can print it on this machine. Uh, so you can do t-shirts? Mm -hmm. T-shirt transfers. Bandanas, Any, like anything flat. Well, not not printing directly on the okay, material. So You're printing on the transfer paper. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, okay. But, but yes, this yes, is yes. not. Okay. This is not. Is this? This is soy bean based you said so is it uh pigment based or dye based it's dye based dye based right? yeah so you don't have to worry about it washing we've got quite a few elementary schools that are rural parts of the state mm -hmm. that i've hooked them up with uh the t-shirt transfer paper yep just got it on amazon no big right. deal it costs about 70 cents a piece yep the biggest thing for them is just access you know they, they don't have a right. local t-shirt guy that they can get a t-shirt so they get all the kids to bring in a white t-shirt and then just press them on for them. Right. I've even seen some of the teachers using the good old iron. They are. But mm -hmm. we've done it. Just you know, it's kind of a it cool thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's kind of a cool thing. And they'll do it for like field day or Christmas or something. It's just really trying to build a like community. But for like fundraisers or anything like that, I mean, it's kind of a cool way. To, and also heat some PR press. stuff. You should get a heat press in that grant you're writing. Yeah. There you go. Oh, okay. We have one at home that I can hook you up with what we did. That and was so nice. Love it. Mm -hmm. A heat um, press? Yeah, okay. it does. It's about a, a 10, maybe 10 by 12 plate. It's got a circular one for hats. It's got a rounded one for oh my God. Like, uh, rounded cups and things. I mean, you do all kinds okay. of stuff. Oh my God. Yep. Okay. <laughs> so once that's loaded, it just goes right back in. If anything's not lined up, it won't go back in. The only thing you got to watch is just don't jam. Okay. If it if it's not sliding in, it's because something's not clicked in or whatever. Yes, ma'am. So you said that the lower the machine runs, the more like the the impression. So how does that compare to the density? Because I know you said the density, a lot of ink. Yeah. So density is, is before the master is made. Okay. So what it's actually doing is turning. There's a scanner inside of that thing, and a thermal print head is what actually burns holes in that master. Gotcha. So that density says, okay, instead of having a baseline of say here, mm -hmm. I'm going to turn the density up one. I want you to put this much more density. Oh, so density they're, they're still different. Okay. Yeah, they're still completely different. Gotcha. Density will give you a darker print before mm -hmm. you start yes, printing. Yes. It's making the master deeper holes. Okay. The print speed will actually give you a little more ink after the master is made. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Nice.
So while we're in here, I'll go ahead and show you the ink cylinder as well. So you got two components here. You got the actual ink tube, and all I'm doing is twisting this to get it out. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. You'll, once you start playing with this machine, you'll realize it's designed for elementary school because there's a ton of them out there in elementary schools. That's our primary user for construction paper is what they run on it. And they run the fool out of construction paper. So it just twists and comes out. There's your ink tube. Now, it's not supposed to leak, but mm -hmm. I don't tempt fate. Uh, 52 years old, and I've ended up so many times with a palm full of ink because it's hot, it's cold, whatever. But it is a vacuum sealed, you can see, or it's like a, not a vacuum, it's like a syringe. Uh, so it is sealed right there. So it, what it's doing is a pump. So there's nothing pushing on it, it's actually a pump pulling it down yeah. inside the machine. So it's not supposed to come out. Here's your danger point. During the summer, if the, they turn the air conditioner off, like happens sometimes, if this thing gets above 80 degrees and stays there for multiple days, somebody needs to run this machine mm -hmm. because it'll keep the ink mixed up if it doesn't, it could separate. Mm -hmm. Like we were talking about with the soy based, it'll, right. it'll separate. Yep. I've only seen it in extreme cases, like in the low country of the state, some of those elementary schools where they just shut the, I mean, they basically <coughs> shut the power off except for one building, one uh, office, and we'll go back and it, it's fixable. You basically just throw this away, we clean up the machine and you're off to the races. It's not gonna damage anything, it just kind of is more of an inconvenience. It makes a mess. It does make a mess. You'll have a pool down on the bottom of the yeah. underneath. Yeah. Yeah. Now the cool thing is it doesn't stand here. This floor is perfect for it. You don't have to worry about staining. I have the same floors in our house. Okay. Um, carpet, we see a lot of carpet. Maybe it will stain carpet yeah. because of the dye. Right. Um, and then people get really upset with me and let me get dry clean carpet. That's all I like, You take it up, I'll take it up. <laughs> All right, so now, just like we press this button to release the master menu, we have a button to release the color cylinder as well. There's a little handle right here. Again, everything blue we can grab, right? The cylinder comes completely out. That's fantastic. Yep, and if you look on it, you should see the image. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's an image on there. Mm -hmm. So there's your screen. That, that's just like a screen print. That's how they screen print t-shirts. Same thing, okay? It does go right back in place. There's little arrows right here. And when you look down, there's an arrow to line it up right there as well. It slides right back in place. It's just like a screen print, only that screen would have taken you like an hour. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. To, like, to, to make a screen. Colors, so we can do. Screen print, it's also very much, I was telling Constance, it's like letterpress. I mean, where yeah. you're making sure that the, all of the ink is across the whole cylinder prior to that. To, to, mm -hmm. to letting the plane ink in, changing the density and all of that. First time about those clips on the end, you dig your clips, it's going to hurt some gum and you'll see it in your print. Remember which clips? No. Yes, you did. <laughs> well, no, I may have told you that, but I don't remember. Oh, oh the, yeah, yeah, coming down. So, <laughs> the guy is not in the clips. So. Oh. I have a wife and a daughter. I've learned just to say no. Don't act like you know what you're talking about. <laughs> So it's just right here. So the, and I'll set this here. So this drum, the screen is flexible. Okay. And that's designed because a lot of people run envelopes on it. They run card stock. So you can't have something that's tight because it won't, it'll jam. There's not enough space in there. So underneath you've got a flexible roller here as well as a flexible drum screen. So it lets you run that card stock through there. Okay. Which is great for printing. What it is is a danger. You gotta be careful. This thing's metal. You don't want to bump your color cylinder on these little guides. You don't want to leave it out on the floor like that and accidentally kick it. That's why they all come with these fancy cases and all that stuff. So you've got a case for all of them and one stays in the machine. Mm -hmm. Typically black stays in it. That's what comes with it. It's up to y'all. Uh, but I just would encourage you, don't leave them out on the table. Don't leave them laying over here. The cases do protect them a little bit from drying out, but they're not... They're not vacuum sealed or anything. They're really more just to protect you from bumping into them, dropping stuff on them, spilling things on them, anything like that. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. So Thank you. when we buy a canister, they all come in that case? So you buy two things here. So if you buy a color cylinder, mm -hmm. that's what you get is this thing. Oh, okay. These are just the refills, the tubes oh, okay. of ink. So we got tubes and cylinders. Okay. So that's the refill that puts the color on the little thing that you can take off there and put in the trash can. That's just full of those little things you put in the trash can. The, what are they? What are they? <laughs> oh, are they the screens. I mean, like, the that's... screens are in the other part. Yeah. Oh, Lord. This is where the screens are. Okay, all right. You can't do it both at the same time. Okay, so that's burning 
That's, that's not burning anything. Right all that is is the delivery method for ink. I'm that's all that Marius's is. Video right now. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to edit this out. So, so think about the, the screens are here. The plates, yep. the masters yep. is what they're referring okay. to. Okay. This is a master right here. Right. It's on the drum. Okay. It's on here. All this does is deliver this ink from this tube onto the paper. Okay. That's all that big piece of equipment does. So that adheres to that, which burns, it pulls that ink up, and then we can run it. That's it. It's actually it's burned before it gets on there, but you're close enough. Okay. But every <laughs> and every color requires its own canister. Yeah. Okay. Every color requires why, its own canister. Why does it require its yeah. own since this is interchangeable? Sure. So I can change this, but look at that yeah. cylinder. It's not it's clear. The on there. So there's a there's an ink reservoir that goes across the bottom of that cylinder that pulled this amount of ink into there. Right. Oh, okay. So it stays, it's got some red. Now I have seen some people do some psychedelic colors because yeah, yeah. I could take blue and pop it into here. And it would mix. Yeah, it'll mix it. It'll mix the it. The last little bit. That but was there's injected. no way to control the mixture. Right. Yeah. Okay. No so, way to so, control. It. So it, everything has its own because of the efficiency. <laughs> it's being able to put red in and get red right away. That's it. Okay. That's it. But now it, is, I mean, it, it does some cool effects. Yeah. I mean, it, it'll and it'll eventually turn the darker color. Right. You can change things from light to dark very easy. But Take about a half a tube. If you would have put the blue in there and it eventually turns blue, it's, you're gonna have a hard time ever getting it back to be red. Uh, it'd be tough. Yeah. To go so from dark like to light is very, very difficult. Yeah. 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 It would just take a long time and you'd be wasting a, a lot. Yeah. 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 So, so there's two ways to do it. One, you can run it and just deal with the colors you get. You can pay us, uh, and I can tell you, it's about a three hour process. We have to take the whole thing apart. We have to clean every internal part, basically take it back to a blank slate then you can put the ink back in. Mm. It's about 350 bucks. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah. Do people ever buy just an extra one of these? It's like a wild card. Oh, yeah. you could mix in. Yeah. 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 Okay. Winthrop University's got a program like you guys. They have a bigger machine, and they've got, I think it's 18 colors. Yeah. And inevitably, every semester, somebody changes their dang mind, and they want to, but they've got about five of them that are mixed. Yeah. Uh, because they just said, we don't want to pay you anymore to do them. I'm like, it's up to you. I mean... But yeah. they, they understand. I mean, you know, we got three hours of labor in the thing. Right. Um, and I can show you how to do it. Uh, but I will warn you, you need to, unless you need gloves up to here, don't touch your face. It's nothing toxic. It's just Mess. imagine trying to clean out a paint can completely yeah. to put another color in. That's essentially what we're doing. Yeah. Um, I have a question. Sure. That part that you're holding right now, mm -hmm. that you can buy separate from the drum. drum. Yep. Okay. Yep, because it's nice. a refill. Those yeah. are the refills. Okay. So if you keep the drum. This would always be the red canister, but we can buy red refills. Oh, that's okay, nice. thank you very much. I yeah. appreciate it, and I understand that now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I asked him to come talk you're to us today. You're a visual learner. You're not learning. And listen, yeah. anytime, if y'all need me to come back, I'm down here at least every two weeks. So if we need to schedule a session, just let me know. Okay. Usually give me a couple weeks' notice, uh, and I'll be glad to come. Yeah. Uh, I've even at, at different departments. We've done uh, 3D printers as well in the past. Mm -hmm. I've spoken to about five engineering classes, a manufacturing class. Uh, I'm pretty good at front of the group. So if you got a anything, a class or anything, I'd be glad to talk to them about. Cool. Great. Um, it's only ten thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> just build. Right, just build, Laura. So we have talked about like the individual colors. Can you talk about like layering the colors? Yeah. Layering the colors. Laying them over the top is yeah. what I'm about to do next. Okay. Man, can you <laughs> <laughs> She's like, segue. <laughs> so that's what we printed in blue, right? So I'm going to go back and lay over uh, the rest of this document. And so, so that's what we got now, right? And I kind of cheated. I just did a, a fold over. So let's think about this. How am I going to there? Is that going to work? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'll work. So I'll put it up here at the top. So it doesn't have to be reversed. The image. Oh, you're that's gonna confuse what, yourself. Now. No, I know. It's like, it's so totally different about this machine. Yeah, it's, it's just not a screen. Yeah, it's, it's just one to one. You have to reverse this one. You don't. It's, it's mirror. Yeah. Okay, it's a mirror. It's not. That's reverse. cool. So anybody in here who's taking screen printing, that's not what yeah. we're doing. Yeah, okay. that's a good point. I didn't know where you were going with that. That's yeah. 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 Like, me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, that's a good point. So when you screen print, because you're you're stamping essentially, you have to reverse it. Well, the yeah. machine does all that. 
that. You don't, you don't have to think about that. Yeah. Um, so you don't, and, and I've done that before. You tip I got to hold it up to a mirror, which I thought was pretty yeah, cool. Yeah. Screen printer. So you have mirrors. He's like, hold, the mirror, hold it up to the mirror to see if the design makes sense. Because if you don't, then when you print it, it's backwards. Mm -hmm. if, you, right? if you really want to get confusing, cool. if you do the heat transfer, now you do have to mirror it. You do have to mirror it on the yeah. heat transfer. Now you're back text. to flipping it. Yep. If you have text. So have fun with that. Yeah. Or an image. You don't want the image backwards either. Yeah. If it's supposed yeah. to be on the right, you don't want it on the left. Yeah. And you want facing the other way. Yeah. I'm just kidding. You can't face it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh. I mean, you don't want them doing down. this and then they're like this, right? Uh, I'm already trying to do that with another project. I don't even want to think about it. <laughs> All right, so think of this as we would essentially have two separate originals, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take this one and go through the same process and just lay it down on glass. Again, centering it. I've got my eight and a half marks and got my center mark here. And from there, just close the lid. Switches over to master making again. It's got a red color cylinder in there. You can hear what it's doing. It's trying to say, all right, if I got enough ink, there's sensors on both ends of that color cylinder to make sure there's enough ink in it. So now I'm going to press start. And what you'll hear is it throws away the old master, digitizes the image, and wraps a new one around it. Where do you put the first print back in? Well, I'm going to show you that. Oh, okay. Every time I make a master, it does a test print. Oh, okay. I so forgot that. It's a cool little tip. Okay. Uh, so just always remember to put these back in. The other thing, just as a reminder, if you're printing something you don't want somebody to see or know, as long as that master's on there, that image is on there, right? Yeah. So I can pop this back in and print whatever. So you've got the ability to put a blank one. All you do is don't put an original down, tell it to make a master, and it'll throw this one away and put a blank one. Okay. If you want, I, I don't know confidentiality or whatever uh, that you guys will have to deal with. <laughs> Last time you put the top, the top of the design you want, you put the top to the right, and this time you put the top to the right. So you're keeping your obviously you're keeping the orientation of the design same exact that's it. aligning in the same. So you basically gotta just print your separations out that's it. before that's you all. before you touch this machine. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty easy actually. Yeah, yeah. and then I would just label the back of them. Yeah. Yeah. So and you can register your place on the glass, right? Yeah. I think that's so weird. may not have gotten a few of those. I'm on, there's also a button on here called Proof. Yeah. And if I hold that, you'll see what it does. It just actually will spit out a few images. Yeah. Yeah, we're not getting ink flow. This cylinder hasn't been used in a while, has it? Yeah, it's still warming up. Yeah. If you start getting, like, if you get something that starts off, but it's lighting back up, because that ink's not flowing. And that's again from sitting, because the machine's been in here a month. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it may not have been used. Uh, but also keep in mind, so this is a good example. This is a very low tech machine. Mm -hmm. So if you print off an original that looks all fancy like that, you're gonna get a blended image like that. This is a low tech machine. This is like a screen, but think about a stamp. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what it is. So things like this, I would not put backgrounds on. Mm -hmm. Maybe screens, something like that. Yeah. For what we're doing, it'll, it'll get our point across, but uh, I'm not gonna be as concerned with the quality of it because this would never be something I would I would actually recommend you print. Right. You could do the image, but just think about how it's all gonna blend if you start doing too much detail. Yeah. Also, when you print things, print them in black and white. Right. Don't print them in color. Uh, it does okay with color, but you can see where it, it gets confused. Yeah. It gets confused on it. Screen printers do the same. Mm -hmm. like more like the professors. So if we're like wanting to use this machine and get like a multiple layered look, will we print like, like separate the layers, um, like an InDesign or mm -hmm. um, Illustrator, whatever we're using, yep. and then just print that one layer at once? So I asked Thomas to, Start working on that so, so like we can separate it. it. So we would make like the black a, a blue version and a yellow version mm -hmm. and a red version. Yeah. Because that's the colors we have, and then print them all out in mm -hmm. black. Because you said there's an issue with gray, right? If oh, you were trying it, to it, it, kind of yeah, if you're trying to get too much screen in and get too fancy, uh, it'll it'll start it'll just lose it. Is what it is. Sorry to go. Which one? 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 Which one?
can see. So it might be trying to round around light gray and dark, dark gray and gets confused. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But the way you can get around is you've got to yeah. have those gradations, just print separate origins. Yeah. You, you can also you can also take images into Photoshop and do halftone patterns on them, and that will lighten it up. I, I, I'm almost sure that when you have an image in Photoshop, you can ask it to make CMYK the separate layers. Yeah, make it channels. Print each layer. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Right? yep. Mm -hmm. I, I can tell you kind of old school, what I see people do with this is they leave CMYK out and they go RGB. Yep. Oh, RGB. Because now, because the colors don't matter. Right. Yeah. Right? They really don't matter. But what you got to watch with the CMYK is sometimes it's getting into some blending of colors. Mm. Yeah. And you go print that in black and white and it could disappear. Okay. Like yellows, for instance. You try to print yellow in, in black and white, sometimes it's just gone. But the printer will keep telling you, yes, I printed your image, I printed your right. image. So, you know, even even take it down another layer. Because it honestly, you've got, what, four colors here? So you're probably not going to overlay more than four images, right? Mm -hmm. but, I mean, it could be purple, green, black, and blue. Because it does not matter. What matters, what's going to produce the color is whatever color somewhere you got in the machine, mm -hmm. right? So if you printed one and you intended it to be yellow, but you have red in, well, guess what? It's coming out red. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right? So that, that's, you just have to, I, I know you guys operate at this level. I'm learning it with my daughter. Just take it down. Mm -hmm. Take it down to the simplest technology you can go with. Yeah. And, and it's going to be some experiment. I mean, I, I think you'll, you'll find that the first couple of times you're like, what in the world? may frustrate you a little bit, but just try to keep in mind how basic the technology is. Keep keep what you're throwing at it basic. And you'll start, I've seen some really cool posters that remind me of my childhood in the 70s that used to be concert posters. I had older cousins that went and had all that psychedelic, in, and that's what people are printing all these things. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, very cool stuff. Yeah, and you can use things like registration marks mm -hmm. yeah. and turn those on. Yep. So if you want things to match up perfectly, yep. so. So I wanted to show you, because you guys were asking about overlay. So mm -hmm. the way I like to do it, so I know which way to put my paper back through, is I leave my test print here. Because now I know, right? I know my paper is coming out, my header's printing at the top, so I need the paper to come straight through like this. So it's pretty straightforward. <clears throat> There's another little blue button. Oh, blue. All it does is release the tension off of the paper feed tray. If I take the paper completely out, it goes all the way down. What was the blue button? Sorry. It's right here. Okay. Blue button. A blue button. A blue button. That's <laughs> it. Now I'm just simply putting my printed images back in. Let's put the paper up there. And I come back over and tell it I want to do, let's say, seven of those. If I start. So is it going to do the red of the image it's that it. you did? The master I made that yeah. did this. It's going to come out. Oh. So switch the master key and screw it up. Okay. Delete. <laughs> yeah. 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 I didn't follow my own instructions. Part, part of that was good. <laughs> yeah. No, it's good. I, I, I'm a big believer. You gotta learn from your states on these things. But let me get out. Let me get something that's right on top of here. Let's get another one. Oh, it happens all the time. That is, yeah. uh, that looked a little... I, yeah. started, I started selling these things when I was 22 years old and 52, so 30 years, you still make mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. So but, the thing that you did, mm -hmm. can, you re can you recap what you did wrong no. for us? <laughs> so essentially what happened, because I was lifting the lid and we were talking and I was showing everything, I changed... Once it scans, you don't have to worry about it. It's right, not a copy. Thanks. I saw that panic. Like, what did you do? <laughs> so anytime the machine switches over to master making, when I hit that start button, it's going to make another plate. That's what happens. Okay. And it's because you lifted the lid. That's it. Because right. I lifted the lid. So, yeah. so lifting the lid yeah. triggers that. Yeah. And then if you do that, is there a way to override that default? Like just to tell it to print instead of yeah. making another master? So, so if I lifted the lid and placed it back down and it switches over to master making mode, I can simply just touch print. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Right. So once your master's made, a good rule of thumb is just make sure that you've got print. And that way you don't have a mistake. Right? <clears throat> that just, I took the public art. So we, we essentially got the same thing. We just changed it up. 
So see how I'm now overlaying that? That is very basic, very rudimentary, but you can, because it is ink. So if you overlay the ink colors together, they will blend, right? Yes. Yeah. That's so you'll get a different yeah, color. I think we should mm -hmm. try that. <laughs> yeah. So now I'm going to press start to print seven, and I'm going to verify it's in print mode. Yeah. So we won't make another master. It's very patriotic. Very, no. very. And again, if I wanted to speed it up, I'm going to print a few more just so we can see the difference in that slow speed and the fast speed. I think we still have four or five over there. Yeah, so that'll give me an idea. From going super fast to super slow. And I'll tell you when you're doing these and you're playing around with them, your friend is an ink pen. So those three versus those three. And just looking at the oh, red, yeah. it's a little different. I don't have my glasses on. Yeah, a little richer. Mm -hmm. But you can start seeing where you'll get a little bit darker, a little bit lighter, and you can play around with it that way. But again, where this will give you a great example of how it's missing out on you know, greens and yellows, mm -hmm. but it did great on oranges and blacks. Mm -hmm. The little clouds, see how they disappeared? Mm -hmm. So you gotta be careful getting too fancy with design or anything like that. Just simple, simple screens are your friends, screens do well. Uh, but when you start getting into some crazy clouds and, you know, will it work? Yeah, but it, it takes a lot of, that didn't work, try it again. That didn't work, try it again. And, and you know, it's up to you. I mean, if, if it's important to you, then you put your time in it, right? Um, on it. There's a little finger that blows the air to separate it from the cylinder. Yeah. So if I have really heavy coverage right on that lead edge, it'll stick. Okay. So just flip it around. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. This way, right? So put that down that way. Right. Because that this part <laughs> just doesn't have that much black mm -hmm. on it. So it's not yep. going to... Okay. So the lid's not going to close all the right. way. Right. So you're going to get some really dark image back here. Okay. So I would never do what she's doing. I don't want <laughs> to do it myself. Like, I actually don't want to do that. Just, <laughs> just, put, just put your face on there. Thanks. <laughs> Oh, yeah, use that. There's plenty yeah. of stuff. So let me show you a little tip. So if I've got something that has heavy coverage on it, again, we've got a thick book, so we may get a little bit. So what I will do is put a piece of white paper right at the very lead edge. Oh. That way I'm forcing it to have a margin. Is essentially what I'm doing. Oh, that's smart. Instead of making it full bleed out, which would just dirty, I imagine. It'll stick. Okay. It'll stick. Okay. So, it, so heavy coverage, you're saying, to the top or to the left or whatever we're calling that, that just causes it to stick. Yep. Mm -hmm. That'll cause it to stick. And I'll show you specifically what it's doing. Again, my blue light's on, right? So I'm able to open it up. <clears throat> and if you look inside the machine, you see that little yellow little yeah, I mean, finger? Yeah, it's called a pick-off finger. So what's happening is imagine this thing's turning, grabs the paper, as it gets close to that pick-off finger, it touches it and blows a puff of air. If you got heavy ink on there, it doesn't want to let go. It stays and it'll wrap around the color center. It's very easy to clear, but it's also very frustrating because you can't fix that by changing paper or anything. It has to have a clean lead edge here. That's your only limitation. Does it matter what type of paper? Like, could be a no, no, this thing will go up to, I think it's 130 pound hard stock or something crazy like that. The only, well, I will say the only thing is it's got a slick coating on it. No, no. Um, It'll print it, you said, but it will never dry. Yeah. Yeah. Roll yeah. off the... What sticks easier, thinner paper or thicker paper? It doesn't matter. It's the finish on it. Okay. Yeah, it really doesn't matter. So like you probably um, is going to be like... Don't yeah, any of your, any of your softer filling papers be fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, there used to be linens. You don't see a lot of linen paper anymore, but linens would be great. Mm -hmm. uh, back in the, the 90s and 2000s, early, so tons of churches, these bulletins, mm -hmm. and they all use these linen papers. Mm -hmm. They look fantastic. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really does look good because they would get creative and all this other stuff. Now, uh, question for you before sure. I do this, because this is farther back than our um, 11 <coughs> inches. Do I need to do the same thing, margin on that side? No. No, the back edge wouldn't matter as much. So the machine's going to scan 14 inches. 
So mm -hmm. you'll, I want you to see it. It's kind of what I'm, what I'm after here. So right. right now you're in print mode. It didn't switch over because we were doing it. Look at you. Well, we'll see. So far. It's doing amazing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we just were in Italy and we were using the um, press from like the, the 1900s. Yeah, and it was so cool. cool. So master so making and yep. then it's, what is it? Start. It just did it? Mm -hmm. it's your, I would like to do it for you. Can I do it? Well, you got to press start. It hasn't made a master oh, it yet. It's just it made a master. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. okay. That yeah. and then this. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> and you'll see the scanner. You can actually see what it's doing now. So you see the scanner going across and scanning. Don't look directly at it. 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 Digitize. And so it's giving you sort of like a progress. Yeah. It walks through what it's going to be. Well, there you go. So we overlaid what was already Yes. Yes. Oh, so this is what you get. Oh, I like the blue. So you're, you're seeing the... Um, I think the blue's on the bottom now. Yeah. Yeah, the blue is on the bottom. And yep. Which is why it looks more purple. So what go. was the speed for why is it like I did a lower density a lower than but look at this. I kinda of like that. Well let's like run it's coming off. Oh. Do we so have like the ink is coming off on the computer. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, so one thing I was gonna tell you, something like that, yeah. I would probably leave that till tomorrow <laughs> to yeah. fully dry. Oh, wow. Uh, just me, because we don't typically run things that heavy. Mm -hmm. And I would never run it on just a twenty pound paper. Yeah. So, okay, this is what I was asking you, is that thinner paper seems, the, if you have a lot of ink on a thinner piece of paper, it seems like kind of not a great situation. Uh, it depends on the application. It depends on what you're going to do with it. If okay. you're going to put it behind glass or something, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Yeah. But think about it as uh, as water on a on paper. Yeah. So the thinner the paper, it'll soak it up, but you may get that cockling, you may get right. the, the waves in the paper. So a thicker down. paper, you don't have yeah. that to deal with. Um, so when you're printing a bunch of copies, uh, it should not, no, because the way the paper comes out, it actually has a stacker over there, and I'll show you that one. That's this image right here. Look at you. <laughs> 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 the thing, the thing. <laughs> Before you fed that back in the machine, much better if that's dry. Oh, that one? Yeah. I would print that last. I would not feed that back in the right. machine. Right. Wait till tomorrow before yeah. you feed that yeah. this back in the sheet machine. Because even just beyond that, that, it just came out. Even yeah. beyond that, whatever I'm going to lay down. The, what you want? Here's the rule of thumb: <coughs> least amount of ink first, most amount of ink last. Mm. Is that how they That's make gradients too? Or is that? So, I'm sorry, I was. Is that how they make gradients? I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Dye more than this. Uh, with this, you, that would be registration and different cylinders unless you wanted to blend it which we've already talked about <laughs> not a good thing <laughs> so i'm gonna run yeah. just a few of those just so we can see so the way it prevents the ink from getting on the back ones is you want to make sure that your stacker is catching it down if the paper is kind of going against each other like that yeah you make it but you can see how it's curling as it's coming out yeah yeah it's already left. yeah but once it lays down it's fine mm -hmm. right but you can see the difference now. And you can feel it. You can feel it. Paper is wet. Just be careful. It'll get on you and you'll wipe your nose. You have a red nose. We like should we should submit this to the Addy Awards this year. This one will win, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> People will be like, that's genius. <laughs> that's the other thing I'm learning with art the from my daughter. Yeah, right? It's in the eye of the beholder. Exactly. <laughs> it's in the eye of the beholder. Yeah. We'll be like, what is this commentary like, on? Like, yeah. So a good rule of color, and we had, say, this was going to be yellow, this was going to be blue. We had another text that was black. I would print all of those, and then my red would be last and fine. Yeah. I would never do red and then run that back through. Mm -hmm. A couple things on there. You may get streaking if it's not completely dry, because it is a friction-fed system. So you have feed tires that are pulling the paper through. And if you got a heavy ink like that, it's not dry, it will streak it. Yep. And it looked like somebody ran a remote control car right through the middle of it. But it's straight line, right? It's not wrapping around it's it's straight from line. one to straight the other. Yep. The paper path on this machine internally, realistically, is only where these white rollers are and where that yellow pickoff thing is. It, it doesn't travel very far. The rest of it's just either being pulled in or shot out. 
There's really not much to it. So it's not, it doesn't matter if like the order of the color you get, it's the order, it's the amount of egg. That's it. Okay. Yep. The other thing to remember too is the, the beauty of the Rizzo, the reason why people like it so much is because it's so imperfect. And it really goes back to the days of like bands printing their flyers at Kinko's and they just look really cheap and Xerox and it, it just, it's a whole aesthetic in yeah. itself. Yeah. Where people used to, I, I remember our band parties, and I know I'm dating myself in yards, probably closer to my kid's age. Uh, but we used to take clippings out of magazines and you tape them on there and yeah. you put them down and make one and you're like, that's cool, we need a thousand of these. And that's what, that's kind of where this thing fits. Yeah. And if you were lucky, there, oh, yeah, yeah. if you were lucky and there was a Kinko's, which is, is there still Kinko's around here? FedEx. FedEx. FedEx, FedEx, yeah, FedEx off. Kinkos, yeah, but yeah. back then it was Kinko's. But if, if they had a machine where they could change it from red to blue, oh man, you could do some cool stuff. Right. So, yeah, that's that's what this is, you know. So I'm gonna show you a couple little things, and all I'm doing is just making another mask. I'm just gonna make one that's a little more simple, uh, so I'll be able to show you these things. And I'm just gonna center that. So if I've got something that's not quite on the eight and a half by eleven, I can just center it up. There's a center line on here. I'll just put it on there. We'll switch it back over to master making and we're going to make another master here. How often should you clean the um, like waste bin out? It'll like... tell you when it's full. Oh, okay. You nice. know what it's Just when it's full, just take it over. Uh, the mm -hmm. big thing is you saw, like a lot of times in our schools and stuff, when they end it, they'll have a paper towel. Mm -hmm. So they'll shake it and then they'll just pull it out. You don't need to wipe it out. Mm -hmm. it's not what is it? What is that called? That little storage bin. Master disposal box. Okay, so when, when you get an error, say master disposal master box. Master disposal box, and it'll actually light up a little light right here. Okay. Uh, you can see it. I think it'll light up. It'll Which wouldn't that be a great band name? Yep. Master right disposal box. That's pretty cool. That yeah. is unique. So it's got okay. a little light that lights up. Okay. Process because another printing process, you would say that your black for last because your black outline on things would cover up a lot of your registration mistakes. Yeah. So that is something that's like going to be hard for me to remember that this so is different than all the first. other ways of that's density last uh, yeah. rather than yeah. Yeah. black first, black yeah. uh, last. Yeah. yeah. Just That'll ruin all my artwork. I know. Because <laughs> I do outlines. It is backwards. You're right. Yeah. yeah. It's hundred percent backwards. Yeah. Because like we do the copier world and it totally is opposite rules here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that we follow with those. Even with some of the high-end production stuff, like we print bills and statements on them, uh, completely different rules. Yeah. Um, all right, so let's say we printed these, and I go, oh, dang it, I want to, I didn't mean to print that first word or whatever, okay? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna show you something pretty cool, but I want you to make sure you listen to a very important part. If I say it three times, it's because it's very important, okay, very important. So I showed you the cylinder earlier, that has the image on it, right? I showed you when I picked it up. There's a little tab right here. It's marked orange. Orange typically means do not touch, mm. which I'm okay with because it's Clemson, so I can remember it, right? <laughs> Just like this kid. So when I press that, what it does is allow me to turn the cylinder, right? So not a big deal right now. Do not push this back in the machine until that cylinder's locked in. Do not push this back in the machine because the cylinder's locked in. I'm sorry, third time I have young kids. Don't push it in until the cylinder's locked back into place. But if you want to come up here and see it, I'll be glad to show you because it's very cool. It'll keep you from having to waste masks. Oh my God. You can doctor the mask. So you can see the image right here. And what I'm going to do is take just a plain old piece of scotch tape and I'm going to put it over the word what? So now, old school. now, I rotate my cylinder back into place. It'll lock. So do I push it back in now? Yes. yes. All right. Everybody pay attention. Cool. So now, close it back up. I'm going to make sure I'm in print, not in master making again like I did before. So we're in print. Now I'm just going to tell it to print. This is a, a cool little feature. We used to sell a lot of these printers back long ago, and they didn't want to waste the mask. Uh, so what they would do is come up with ways to do it. You see what I did? Oh, <laughs> that's <wow>. perfect. <laughs> it is perfect. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> so even if you're, you know, you're messing around with something, you're like, I wonder if I just took that out. Because you can put a piece of tape right through the middle of that thing, and it doesn't matter. I love that. 
Then once it grows <laughs> that, now we will encourage you, don't put more than a couple on there. Don't get crazy with it because it, you know, it's a pretty low tech thing throwing that old master out, but it throws it away for you. Yeah. So you want to take on it, it's not a big deal. It'll still chunk it out the door for you. So pretty cool. Eh? That's super cool. Yeah. <clears throat> so the other thing I wanted to show you with the, with the paper towel here, if you do happen to have a misfeed, and what I mean by misfeed, something jams, it can go through, or it got stuck in the middle or whatever, what can happen is if this cylinder is still rotating, you may end up with ink transferred from an image like that that gets on maybe the bottom part. Maybe it got down here. And mm. I printed it and I go, dang it, I got ink down here. If there's no image, if it was just by, it was a byproduct from a misfeed or something, you can simply take a paper towel and wipe it off. Huh. Okay? Could you also you, just make a new master? You could. Okay. But instead of doing that, yeah. this is an easier way to do it. Okay. It's much faster this way, too. Yeah. Because if you notice, if I rub here, if there's no image, there's no ink. But if I come back here and rub... Yeah, mm. so that does what again? So it just... If so if I had a misfit, and there's, there's ghost image, or there's something down here, and I go, I didn't need that. Okay. Well, what has happened is ink has gotten on your master here. And you just wipe it off. Or that could be a super cool accident yeah. that adds some cool, weird <laughs> texture. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> People freak out over mistakes usually in my world. Y'all are like, yeah. that is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably do my soul good to come up here once a month just to hang out. You should. <laughs> should. If that's on the master, then, uh, will it print on my, will it print, like what you just did just now, um, will it print just like that? With the white um, on a number of. Uh, you mean where I wiped it to show yes. you where the. Yeah, it'll print. Yeah. It'll print I'm, I'm assuming like, that the like first the one would print weak. Like where I didn't change it, but the second one would be okay. I didn't change anything with the master that time. All I did was wipe everything with paper towels. So right. if I go and tell it to print five, we're still print. Nothing changes. The only thing that's different from the original versus this one is where I got rid of the word. Yeah. Yeah. That, that purpose, the wipe, was just to show you what you would get. Right. So if you wipe a clean paper towel and nothing's on it, then you're good to go. Because mm. it's constantly see, pulling up ink from that search. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Did it have to get a little... Oh, no, it wasn't no. even doing anything with that. No, I don't think so. It didn't affect it at all. Yeah, and you can 